Hey guys, Kalila here, or Kelly, and welcome to my more copy Kelly channel where all I do is crochet. Today, I am going to be showing you guys how I made this Weasley Christmas sweater. If you're a Potterhead, you totally understand what I'm talking about. If you're not, every single Christmas, Molly Weasley, Ron Weasley's mom, would always make her kids and Harry a Christmas sweater with their initial on it. So I decided to make Harry's own with the H and my last name is Harry. So it's like kind of fitting. <laughs> but every time around Christmas time, because next week is Christmas crazy, I always go on like a Harry Potter binge, reading the books, watching the movies. And I was like, I wonder if there's a tutorial on how to make a sweater. So I go on YouTube, clack, 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 look around, find nothing. No. Nah. Thing. Like I found some on like embroidering like a letter and stuff, but I didn't find any that showed crocheting like just straight up and I wanted to do that. So I got out my handy dandy notebook where I write out all my patterns and I just started writing out a pattern based on like other sweaters I've made and experimented with and the letters that I got, let me show you. So this is what it looks like on me. You probably saw it in a montage already, but this is what it looks like. It goes down like below my waist. My waistline is right here and it goes a few inches below it. Then this is what it looks like, the arms and like the way it's, it's big on me, but not too big, you know, like this is me, this is the sweater. So, you know, it's kind of awesome. <laughs> and so the letter, I actually didn't, know like what grid I should do. And so I found someone else who made a Weasley sweater, but they didn't like make a tutorial on it. Um, after I had written up my pattern for like the sweater, I asked her if I could use her letters so that I can add it to my own pattern. And she said that was fine. So in this tutorial, I don't show you the letters because it's her letters and I don't want to like give that information out. So if you follow my pattern, I have all of the letter grids so you don't have to like make your own or search for one yourself. But if you aren't following the pattern, then I show you in the video how you can actually map out your own letter, what I use for it, and like the dimensions, like the stitches and the rows you'll need to fit your letter in. So it should be fairly simple. Even if you don't follow the pattern, you can always make your own letter. Oh, and the sizing, I explained it in a video too. I'm saying explain a lot, but I do explain it, but just in case I forget because I'm filming this before I'm editing my video and I haven't done the voiceover yet. So my sweater is like 85. Um, I did the ribbing 85. But if you want it to be bigger than this, you can just keep on going. So 85, 95, 105, until it's the size that you want. Same with your sleeve. You can make it as long as you want. Just keep on going and measure it to your arm and see like how it will turn out. Same with the band when you do your ribbing part, just like put it around you and see like how it fits. And that's how you know the size that you'll have. Because I know a lot of people don't have measuring tapes and measure themselves. I think that's a good way to see how big you want your garment to be. And yeah, I think that is it. This is my first time making a tutorial. <laughs> so if it's not perfect, you know, I will get better with time. And also follow me on my Instagram. I think I'll put it somewhere here or there, whichever one looks better. And let me know if you guys recreate it, tag me on there. And you know, let's let's have fun with this. I think this is, uh, this is cool. Also, you don't have to use this letter H. You can use whatever initial you want to use. I used H because my last name is Harry and I wanted to make a Harry Potter one. You can make it your house colors. I'm gonna make another one and it's gonna be like with L, which is for Kalila and it's gonna be my Slytherin house color. So it's gonna be green and then the letter is gonna be gray, silver looking. But yeah, you can customize it to however you want it to be. If you wanna just make a regular sweater out of it, you can. So I think that's enough talking for the intro and let's get into the tutorial. Golly, I talk a lot. In this tutorial, the materials you'll need will be two different colored 
100% acrylic yarn. I used around 640 to 650 grams and I used like five balls of the red. Well, four and a half, but almost five. And then I just used a little bit of the gold and they are in the colors gold and claret and it's impeccable by Loops and Threads. You'll need a 5.5 millimeter hook and I'm using a hook from my Harry Potter wand inspired collection that I got from Etsy. It seemed like the perfect one to use for this project because you know, it's a Weasley sweater from Harry Potter. So like, why not use the Harry Potter wand? It came in different sizes and different wand designs as you can see. You'll need a tapestry needle, an electronic counter, scissors, and stitch markers. First, we will work on the back panel and we're going to start with the ribbing. You gotta start with a chain of nine and you're going to crochet eight single crochets into each chain. Now for row two, you're going to work into the back loops only and you're gonna keep working in the back loops until row 85. So rows two through 85, you're going to work into the back loops only. Now that you have 85 rows of single crochet back loops only, you're going to turn your work horizontally and work into each space at the top. And the total amount of stitches you should have after that is 85 single crochet, just like the ribbing. So 85 single crochet into all of the spaces. After you have 85 single crochet, you're going to chain two, turn your work, and you're going to start a new row. So this will be row one. So rows one to row 40, you're going to double crochet into every single stitch. At this point, you should have 40 rows of double crochet, and now we're going to start row 41. So for row 41, we're going to count 32 stitches and put a stitch marker into stitch 33. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side of your work. So now you should have this space in between of 21 stitches that you just don't work in because this is the part where we're going to start our neckline area and this is where our neckline is going to form. For row 41, you're going to work 30 double crochet and then one decrease. So you see the two at the end, you're going to leave two out and that is where you're going to do your decrease. So you should have 31 total stitches after this decrease. Then you're going to chain two and turn your work. And for row 42, you're just going to double crochet 31 across normally, no decreases, no anything, just do 31 double crochets. Now that you're done with row 42, for row 43, you're going to chain two and you're going to double crochet into 29 stitches and do one decrease. So you'll have two stitches left at the end and that is where you're going to do your decrease. So you should have a total of 30 double crochet across this part for row 43. And now for row 44, you're going to chain two of course and turn your work and you're going to double crochet 30 across. So double crochet normally into all 30 stitches, no decreasing or anything. Essentially, we increased every other row. So row 41 was an increase, row 42 was normal, 143 was an increase, and 144 is normal. So now that one side is finished, we're going to fasten off and cut off our yarn. We're going to repeat the same thing on the other side, starting at row 41, just like we did with the left side for me, so turn it around, it's the right side. Starting at row 41, just like you did on the other side, attach your yarn and you're going to repeat rows 41 through 44. You can rewind to the part that had row 41 if you don't remember and just copy that exactly. So this is what your back panel should look like when you're finished. You can weave in all of these ends so that they don't get in the way later. I like to periodically weave in my ends because I don't like having all the extra ends after the finished work. 
Now we're going to start on our front panel and we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the back with the ribbing. So chain nine and then work one single crochet into each chain until you have eight total stitches. And for row two, you are going to single crochet into the back loops only. And you're going to do that until you have 85 rows of back loop only single crochet. Now that you have 85 rows of the ribbing, you're going to single crochet into each space at the top until you have 85 stitches. So 85 single crochet, make sure you space it out a little bit because you don't want it to start bunching up. After you single crochet, you're going to chain two, turn your work, and you're going to double crochet for 22 rows. So you have your 85 stitches here, double crochet into each of the stitches across until you have 85 and continue that until row 22. Now we are on row 23, and for this row, we are only going to double crochet into the first 28 stitches and then place a stitch marker in the 29th stitch. Now we have double crocheted until the stitch marker, so you should have 28 stitches. At this point, this is where we're going to start our letter. So you have around three options at this point. You can choose to not do the letter. If you haven't worked with doing tapestry crochet before, it might be a little difficult. So you can always work it up and make a normal sweater and it can still be a Weasley sweater. You just don't have the letter on it, but I feel like the letter is what makes it a Weasley sweater. The second option is you can make your own letter if you're not following along with the pattern and I will show you how you can do that. So the grid size you'll need will be stitch 29 until stitch 56 and that will go up 12 rows. So that'll be from rows 23, which is the one we're on now, until row 34. And those are the dimensions. So 28 stitches by 12 rows. Now the third option is the option that I'm using, which is using my pattern that I have below in the description box. Crochet with Meg was kind enough to allow me to use her letters that she had and it maps out the grid perfectly. So you can just follow along with the little boxes that you see there in the pattern. So if you have the pattern, go all the way down to the last few pages and you will see that the letters are mapped out in grids. So each little square is a stitch. So all you have to do is follow the grid boxes and just fill in where the letter shows you. So if it shows you a cream box at the beginning, you're going to continue with your main color. If it shows you a black box, that means that is the letter part and you're going to change your color. The grid has a black letter with a cream background or a border basically. So any cream spots that you see starting from stitch 29, if the first box is cream, you're going to continue using your main color and whenever it turns black, that is when you change your color to the second color that you're gonna be using. This is the second color that I'm using. So whenever I see black, I'm just gonna change it to that color. So work up your letter until you're finished. It should go until row 34. Also remember, if you're working with the letter, if you are right-handed, you have to work from right to left. And if you're a left-hander, it's from left to right. So you're not gonna work across like normally from left to right and then go back to left to right and then left to right because then your letter is going to end up looking janky and like some will be on one side of your panel and some will be on the other side of the panel because when we turn our work, it essentially turns it backward. So sometimes you'll be working on the correct side, sometimes you'll be working on the wrong side. So you want to alternate and read from right to left, left to right, right to left, left to right so that your letter can come out the way it should. So you're gonna see the grid and you're going to read the grid that way. So once you work on the left side and go all the way down to the right side, when you turn your work, 
and go to the next row, stay on the right side and read the grid from right to left. And then again, when you finish on the left, start on the left to right, okay? Now when I'm doing my color, I like to put my markers where I know I'm going to change the color. So to change your color, you're going to just crochet normally until you get to your marker. All right, so this is the last stitch right there before the marker. So we're going to double crochet into that normally, pull through two, and now I'm going to leave the two. And before I finish, cause usually, you know, you're gonna yarn over and pull through the last two, but I'm going to change my color in this last stitch. So I have my second color right here and I'm going to loop it onto my hook and I'm going to pull through two with that new color. And now my new color is on my hook. So whenever you need to change your color to start your letter or start a part of your letter, that is what I like to do to change my color. You can always just uh, tie it in if you want. You can carry your other yarn behind it or you can just cut it off and until you need it again. I like to do both, but for this one, I'm gonna cut it off because I feel like it's easier for my color not to bleed through my letter color and I want it to look very, very neat for this pattern. This is my letter so far, but I want to come and say, if you guys are not using the pattern, which is totally fine, I understand, but I want to give you some more help for making your letter, <laughs> to making your letter easier. If you're trying to plot out your own letter in the dimensions that I gave you to 28 stitches by 12 rows, then you should get something called Stitch Fiddle. And Stitch Fiddle is just a site where you can plot out different projects that you are working in grids with. And I like to do this. I like to use this to plan out the size of my garments. And I have 85 stitches by 44 rows here. And so I can get like an accurate dimension of where I want my letter to be, which is where I got, you know, row 23 to row 34 is where I want my letter to be centered on my project based on the letter grids that I got from Meg. So if you are doing your own letter, then I suggest you go on Stitch Fiddle and make sure it's 85 across and 44 going up and down. And then you can find the center of the garment. And if you're following along exactly with the dimensions that I use, then you can just go to row 23 and make sure you go to the 29th stitch and then just start plotting out your letter within the 28 stitches in 12 rows and then just copy that. You can just read your graph that you make and just read it from left to right and right to left and then just change your color whenever you see you change your color on the grid. And your letter does not have to fill up the entire grid, of course, because you see my H doesn't fill in everything because if you don't, if you fill in everything, you won't create a letter. So there will be some parts of the grid that you don't use, which is perfect because then that means you have made a picture or a letter in this case. So if you need help graphing out your letter or graphing out anything really, Stitch Fiddle is so perfect for that. I have finished my letter and you should have just finished row 34. So now we're going to be on row 35. For rows 35 through 40, we're going to double crochet normally with our main color only. So no more secondary color, we're done with that. You're just going to double crochet until row 40. At this point, you should have just finished row 40 and now we're going to work on our neckline just like we did for the back. So we'll be repeating what we did by counting out our 32 stitches and putting the stitch marker into the 33rd stitch and you're going to do that on both sides. So for row 41, you're going to chain two and then crochet into 30 stitches and leave two stitches open for your decrease. So 30 double crochets and one decrease. So you see your two stitches here, just decrease into that and you should have 31 total stitches. So now you're going to chain two and you're on row 42 at this point. So you're going to do 31 double crochets across no decreases or anything just double crochet normally and you should have 31 total stitches at the end of this row 
Now that you've finished that, you're going to chain two and turn your work. And we're now in row 43. So for row 43, you're going to double crochet into 29 stitches, leaving two stitches out for the one decrease at the end. So crochet 29, double crochet, and one decrease. So you see our two stitches are out, of course decrease into those stitches and you should have 30 total stitches of double crochet at the end. And now you're going to chain two and we're on row 44. So for row 44, we are just going to do 30 normal double crochets across the top of this panel. No decreases, no increases, just 30 regular double crochet. And then you're going to fasten off and repeat the same thing on the other side of the panel. This is what it should look like when you're finished with the front panel. The neckline looks just like the back. And now we're going to be moving on to the sleeves. For the ribbing of the sleeves, we're going to chain nine and single crochet eight into the chain. So you should have eight total single crochets when you're done. And for row two, of course, we're going to go into the back loops only until row 25 or until it fits comfortably around your wrist because you don't have to follow my pattern exactly. If you want to widen it, just continue doing single crochets. So now we have our 25 ribbed single crochets. You're going to single crochet into each space at the top of this panel until you have 25 total stitches. Now we have our 25 single crochets. You're going to start row one and we're going to begin our increases. For our increases, we're going to put two double crochets into the first and last stitches and then double crochet normally in between that. So increase in the first stitch and then you're going to double crochet. And then in the last stitch, you're going to put two double crochets into that stitch. And you're going to continue increasing in the first stitch and the last stitch for every row until row 10. So row 10 should be the last row where you do the increase at the beginning and the increase at the end. This is what your project should look like when you have finished row 10 and the last row of increases. It should have fanned out just like that and you should have 45 double crochet across. Now we're going to chain two and start on row 11. For rows 11 through 32, you're going to double crochet normally. No more increases or anything because it fits nicely around my upper arm. If it doesn't fit around your upper arm, of course, you can continue increasing until it does. Now you've gotten to row 32, you're going to fasten off and this is what it should look like. You're going to repeat the same steps to make a second sleeve. When your sleeves are done, Take the back panel and the front panel and line them up together just like this. Then you're going to get some stitch markers and pin both of the panels together. You don't have to do that, but I find it helps me to keep them from being misaligned, especially when I start to slip stitch them together. Now you're going to take your yarn and attach it to the panels, and then you're going to slip stitch across the top of the shoulder parts. Make sure you only slip stitch in between where you put your stitch markers because you don't wanna accidentally go into your neckline and then <laughs> slip stitch your neck opening close. When you're done with both shoulders, just be sure to weave in these ends. I like to weave in my ends as I go because I don't wanna have a lot to do at the end. And you can weave in your ends anyhow, but I like to make sure I don't stretch it too far down the panel because then when you start to stretch it out, it tends to peek out. So I just go across like the top in the direction that it came from and just go in between the stitches just so that it just looks natural and it's less likely to peek out when you stretch it. So when both shoulders are slip stitched, you're going to attach your sleeves to the body of the sweater. So take one sleeve and place it next to the body of the sweater and line it up to the shoulder part. Then you're going to get some stitch markers and place them where the sleeves end on the body part. So like right, like the armpit area, that's where you're going to put one stitch marker on one side of the panel and then another stitch marker on the other side of the panel. Not the sleeves just yet, just only the body part of the panel. 
And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So you should have four stitch markers total. So two stitch markers on each side. Now that your stitch markers are in place, you're going to flip the body panels open and lay it flat on the surface that you're working on. So you should see a big old hole in the middle where your neckline is. So grab one sleeve and open it up. You're going to place it next to the open panels and make sure it lines up to the stitch markers. And once you have it lined up, you're going to connect the sleeves to the stitch marker. So just open up the stitch marker, put your sleeve on it, close it up and do the same thing on the other side. So make sure you repeat this on the, if you're on the left side, make sure you repeat it on the right side. If you're on the right side, make sure you repeat it on the left side, just so that they are identical because these are where your arms are going to go through. So once they're connected, you're going to pull up the sleeve with the panel until it looks like it's against each other. And you're going to slip stitch the sleeve and the panel together along that line that you see there. This is what it should look like when you are done. It has a bumpy line, but you're gonna flip it when you're finished so those lines won't even exist anymore and it won't be seen when you wear it. So you're going to do the same thing on the other side and slip stitch across the opening of the panel and the sleeve. And make sure it's only between the stitch markers that you placed. So when you're finished, you're going to flip the panels and align them together to resemble a fully made sweater. So like put the sleeves together, put the body parts together and just try to line it up as best as you can. After they are kind of together, it doesn't have to be perfect. I like to take my stitch markers and place them in certain places like under the armpit or on the sleeves and on the side just to make sure my project doesn't move too much. You can place as many or as little as you'd like or you don't have to place them at all. I just believe it makes things easier for when you slip stitch them together because if you don't have something putting them together, it tends to like move a little bit and I don't want my project to shift apart. At this part, I take my stitch marker out and then I attach my yarn and I'm going to slip stitch along the side of the sweater, along the sleeve of the sweater and until I reach the wrist part like the cuff area and I'm going to finish there. Once I'm finished with this side of the panel, I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other sides. Now I'm finished slip stitching the panels and the sleeves together and it is pretty much finished at this point, like the body part is finished. So I'm going to turn the sweater inside out until it's on the correct side or the right side where you won't see those bumpy seams. For the last part of this sweater, we're going to single crochet around the entire collar or neck area, and we're going to do that for four rows. You don't have to put in any specific stitch as long as you make four rows. I like to start from the back just so if I have to hide anything, my hair can hide it if I mess up on the back part. So single crochet for four rows around the collar. And this is the finished 
product. If you made it this far, thank you. And I hope you enjoyed making this with me. Make sure you like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram and make sure you show me if you recreated this and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.